This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Manscaped and by Honey. There are multiple coronavirus vaccines out there getting injected into people all across the country. Good! Now. And while it might not be happening as quickly as it should, it's a huge relief for some populations that are especially at risk, especially uh, healthcare workers and old people. Mm -hmm. Get them the shot. For a lot of the rest of us, though, it's going to be a while. Sit down and just start waiting. Uh, based on every questionnaire that we've filled out, uh, being in our mid-30s with no pre-existing medical conditions and a job that requires zero physical interaction with the public means we're basically uh, dead last in line. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that makes sense. But still, this COVID shit's gotten real old. We would like it to be over with. And uh, that can't happen until they stick us with that needle. I mean, what about my... My mental health uh, situation because of the isolation, Doc. That should bump me up that, on the yeah, list. Put me on the list. Some yeah. people are probably enjoying it. I'm not. I would like to go somewhere. I might not be in the uh, 65 and older age category, but mentally, I am 100 years old. Yeah. But hey, uh, what are you going to do? I mean, some people who don't fit the criteria for vaccination have managed to get it anyway by waiting outside of vaccination sites just all day long for multiple days, hoping to receive leftover doses that are about to expire. But that's a whole lot of waiting around with no real guarantee that it's ever going to pay off. And in some places, doctors are getting in trouble for it, even though it's kind of better to do that than letting the doses go to waste. Yeah. There was uh, that guy a couple weeks back that like got fired for doing job? it. Like, go fuck yourself. Yeah, that was bullshit. Yeah. Let, Don't... let the man vaccinate people. Yeah. So what else is there? Well, I mean, legally, nothing. Um, but if you're willing to break the rules through uh, a little deception, uh, maybe, maybe there's a vaccine in your future. Are you a bad enough dude? <laughs> yeah, if you don't meet the age cutoff of 65 years old, well, um, why not just dress yourself up like you are elderly? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what two Florida women did last week, or at least tried to do. Uh, from the New York Times... Maybe it was the bonnets or the gloves that the two women donned, though the temperatures in Orlando, Florida on Wednesday hovered in the 60s. In a scene right out of a sitcom, the women went to a coronavirus vaccination site dressed up as grannies, said Dr. Paul Pino, the health administrator for Orange County, at a news conference on Thursday. Except they were 34 and 44, not over 65. So despite their get-ups, which included spectacles, they were ineligible to get the shots in Florida. However, the ruse may have worked before. The women presented valid Centers for Disease Control and Prevention cards indicating that they had already received their first vaccine doses, mm -hmm. Dr. Pino said, who did not name them. Quote, I don't know how they escaped the first time, he said. So yeah, these two women not only unsuccessfully tried to get vaccinated by dressing up as grannies, they also somehow previously successfully conned their way into getting a vaccine shot under the pretense that they were 30 years older than they actually are. And you got to love friends with a big age gap I like mean, that. It's, 34 and 44, it's, you love to see it. It's Florida. The amount of, I mean, I watched most of Nip Tuck. The amount of plastic surgery they got in some parts of Florida, like, it's kind of rude to really guess anyone's age. Yeah, also, like, in Florida, I think it was, like, I, very recently, Publix started offering it, too. And I don't think anyone working in a Publix is going to be like... Uh, are you sure you're not dressed up and pretending to be old? Because someone's going to take yeah, that as an that's, offense. that's just awkward. It's easier to just be like, all right, fine, you student line. I mean, it is kind of a compliment, though. Are you sure you're 65? Yeah, I mean, that's the whole that's the whole thing with mm -hmm. carding people well past when they're supposed to get carded. They, mm -hmm. I haven't been carded at buying alcohol at all this year, and it fucking sucks. Yeah. Like, with the mask on, they can tell how old I am. Yeah, they don't, they don't want to, they don't want to, like... Take the mask off or anything like that. Here you that. go, There's old like, man. Whatever. Take your sake. Uh, I mean, look, it must have been some disguise, even if they got through it one time, yeah. right? Yeah. Or maybe not. I mean, this story conjures up images of two women with white wigs and thick glasses hunched over a cane. I'd like a vaccine, please. Look, I would assume they were I'm dressed old. like the granny from Sylvester and Tweety. Yeah, with like a, a doily around their neck for no reason. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Just... Exactly what you're picturing, basically. Yeah. But police body cam footage from the incident features two women who seem to have put zero effort into their grip. Yeah. Uh, they might have gotten lazy after the first time with how easily it went. They might have. Uh, one woman has what could maybe be described as a bonnet on her head, but otherwise they just look like your typical 34-year-old and 44-year-old women. Yeah. The whole disguised as grannies narrative seems to, if I had to guess, seems to have been spun up by the Florida Department of Health to make it seem like they almost got tricked by some very conniving con artist. That's, a, that's it's a good thing we were doing our jobs and stop these these scam artists, these tricksters from mm -hmm. getting the vaccine. they Now, don't to get. you try it? Yeah. yeah. But they these 
they're not even dressed up. I don't know. This, they are not in costume as grannies. They're just two women who looked their own age, who tried to get vaccines and said they were old. And they, they tried to basically do a thing where it's like, they're not going to call us out on this. Well, that it's would like, be awkward. And I mean, people hate awkwardness. I mean, look, yes, that's correct. But what I'm saying is like, if you have a strong enough desire to get this vaccine, which I do, uh, but like, you know, the type of makeup that like Johnny Knoxville did in that movie. And I think he did it in a jackass. Thing oh, where, yeah. where He dresses up as the old grandpa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that actually is entirely believable. Well, I mean, like we talked about this. It feels like so long ago, but uh, it caught it. Like I'm was, saying a couple hundred bucks and you could probably get this vaccine by pretending you're old. There was teenagers talked about this over the summer. TikTok teens. Yeah. Underage TikTok teens were buying uh, like rubber Halloween granny masks, mm -hmm. which are not that convincing. But you put sunglasses on, put a decent wig on it and a, yeah, a mouth mask. And you go to a liquor store and you you walk the walk. I mean, your average person behind the counters could be like, oh, yeah, it's an old lady who gives a shit. Yeah, pretty Here, much. Here's your wine coolers. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, the reality of this, it, it seems a lot less interesting than what we were told by the headlines. Mm -hmm. It seems like these women just walked up and said, hello, I am 65 years old. I would like a vaccine dose, please. And they were like, no, you're not. <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. It's, yeah. But still, uh, I mean, this did apparently seem to work the first time they tried it. Maybe they put a little more effort. It would be it. unethical to give them the second shot. Yeah. To not give them I the mean, second shot. It, yeah, it is. They are kind of now wasting <laughs> yeah, I, doses that. by not letting them have the second shot. Yeah. Um, but there's no telling how many people in this country, and this is a big country, how mm -hmm. many people have actually put in the effort of making themselves look elderly and how many people have successfully done that to get that vaccine shot. Now, you got to go like above and beyond and make it seem like you really don't want it. Like you have to dress up like a granny or an old guy and then have like a QAnon shirt on. Yeah. And like, I'm only here because my son said he won't talk to me unless I get it. They're not going to let me see my grandkids unless I get vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, I don't want it. I don't want it. Oh, well, you're getting it now. We're going to give it to you now. See, the thing, the thing that's the hardest about this specific uh, pretending to be an old person grift is they give you your shot in your shoulder mm -hmm. and like you can do up your face and maybe even your hands to look old. But old people have that specific sort of skin on their their limbs, and their body. They're that, like it's I, the I, imperfect. It, not that the skin isn't smooth. The imperfections show more. Yeah. You see like more like moles or birthmarks yeah, or whatever. It's like I. I you, I don't know how you would even like the texture, like now the, here's the amount the, of bounce to it. Elliot, the papery you, skin. You are forgetting one thing: the people of Florida sit in the sun all oh, yeah. day long. So yeah, yeah, I guess you could be like forty and have that leather, leather out, leathery old lady skin on your arm. And they arms. drink all day and they smoke yeah, all day. Dried out. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, look, I, I I escaped from it. I still have to this day. I left Florida when I was like twenty years old, nineteen years old. I have the driest skin of all time because I spent my entire life as a kid yeah. in the fucking sun in the and in the humidity. Yeah. So like, my body's used to the like, yeah, grew you're, used to the humidity. Your DNA was out here. I'm decided like a, long ago. Like oh, this, you know, we're good. We don't need to produce yeah. like oil. Yeah, I'm like a mummy <laughs> yeah. in, in yeah. Southern California. Yeah. Uh, so what, what I'm saying is, is like the skin to age ratio there might be a little skewed. Yeah. Well. There's got to be, like, in this entire country of, like, 300-some million people, there's got to be at least one person who has successfully aged themselves up to get vaccinated. <laughs> it's like the two kids in a trench coat, and they're like, hi, I'm here for my vaccine. Actually, can you put one in my leg as well? Yeah, <laughs> just to make sure I... Uh... Or they'll, like, switch and then come back through. Yeah. <laughs> Also, look, obviously, this is not a cool crime. No, no. got to clarify should, that. You should not be taking vaccine doses that are meant for the elderly because they are the most at risk. But on the other hand, it's not like Florida is really trying all that hard to get vaccines where they need to be. In fact, it came out last week that uh, Governor Ron DeSantis is basically playing favorites. Uh, despite protocols for setting up state-run vaccination sites in places where it's most needed, DeSantis and a Manatee County commissioner set up one of the first sites in uh, one of the county's richest neighborhoods, uh, which has had extremely low COVID cases. And I grew up right near this neighborhood. Yeah. It's uh, is it Lakewood Ranch. Something like that. Uh, and they even had a VIP list to uh, let certain friends and allies skip the line entirely. Yeah. So, yeah, Florida, most of their vaccination is privately run because, like Texas, you know, 
keep government out of my business. Mm -hmm. But they they did come through. They're like, all right, we'll have a few state-run sites set up for places that need it the most. And they just immediately put it in this extremely wealthy neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, they're like, oh, by the way, some people that donated money to your campaign last year live here. So maybe... uh, Put them at the top yeah, the, one of the the Rolling Stones guy just bought a house there for his girlfriend, Mick Jagger. Yeah, I think it just is like much younger girlfriend who's still an adult person, obviously. Okay, but good. But he's like a hundred, so she's yeah. like eighty. It's you know still a pretty big age. He, he should get the vaccine. Yeah, I mean that's why I moved there straight to the. Where are they putting the first vaccine site? I just want to buy a house there. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So yeah, when the press discovered what was going on, Ron DeSantis responded by threatening to divert the state's vaccine supply to other counties that complain less. Mm -hmm. Quote, if Manatee County doesn't like us doing this, we are totally fine with putting this in counties that want it. We're totally happy to do that. If there's going to be folks that are going to complain about getting more vaccines, you know, I'll tell you what. I mean, I wouldn't be complaining. (laughs) I'd be thankful that we're able to do it because you know what? We didn't need to do this at all. Yeah. I love that. I I hate it, but... uh, because it's, it's people, it's other people in Manatee County being like, why was it in this neighborhood when it should be in this neighborhood? And he's like, well, you know what? I didn't have to put any vaccines in your county. Yeah. You know what? You should be grateful. Yes. Uh, yeah. It, Bradenton is in Manatee County and it is a, uh, you know. Yeah, you've, you've said a lot about Bradenton. Bradenton. Yeah. It's uh, the other side of the tracks. It, it, it is. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been there in forever, so I don't know how it's, uh, how it's done in the past 15 years, mm-hmm. but uh, it was definitely like. Yep, that's Bradenton up there. It's like the Shelbyville. We've had a lot of headlines, <laughs> yeah. Florida Man headlines out of Bradenton. Mm-hmm. But Manatee show. County, they don't call themselves Bradenton. They're okay, so it's very awkward. So Bradenton's actually closer to the water. Yeah. But in Manatee County, where this place is, is actually east of the highway. Mm. But there was more space there, and then they built the houses bigger. So there's no manatees in Manatee County? No, there are. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's yeah, there's a power plant up near there I that's see. uh they love the warm water uh, created by the power plant, so they mm. just sit right there. It's like a hot tub. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Yeah. But uh, regardless of how unfair the vaccine distribution in Florida might be, don't dress yourself up like an elderly person to cheat your way into getting a vaccine early. Again, it's not a cool crime. Uh, and speaking of grown-ass adults pretending to do to uh, be people they aren't in order to circumvent sensible rules related to the pandemic we're in, and also speaking of Florida... Two Florida men, or at least two men in Florida, were so against the idea of having to wear a mask while staying at a resort in South Florida that they pretended to be members of law enforcement. From the New York Times, Walter Wayne Brown Jr., 53, and Gary Brummett, 81, flashed mask exemption cards and fake U.S. Marshal badges to get around mask rules at the hotel, according to the criminal complaint filed in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of Florida. They were arrested last week after a real U.S. Marshal was sent to the hotel to validate their claims. During their confrontations with members of the resort staff, both men wore authentic appearing circular badges with a seven-point star that read Cherokee Nation Marshal and any via criminal justice deputy, according to the complaint. This is another thing of just why they're trying harder than it is to just wear a mask to not wear a mask. Yeah, the amount of effort here and the amount of risk. Yeah, kind just of, put the mask it's, on. It's a piece of cloth. Also from the article, during his stay, Mr. Brummett approached the front desk to ask for coffee, according to the criminal complaint. When an employee working at the front desk asked him to wear a mask, Mr. Brummett presented the face mask exemption card and said that the hotel would be fined $75,000 if he were forced to wear a mask. Then he pointed to a badge on his belt and threatened to arrest the employee. You know what this means? I'm a U.S. Marshal and can have you arrested if you force me to wear a mask, Mr. Brummett said, according to the complaint. (laughs) Members of the hotel staff, quote, thought it was strange for a federal agent to make an issue about wearing a mask, the complaint said. So they notified the Broward County Sheriff's Office, which called a real U.S. Marshal to investigate the authenticity of the claims. And yeah, long story short, the the real U.S. Marshal showed up and promptly discovered that these anti-mask dipshits were just impersonating federal law enforcement, which is a... A serious offense that carries up to three years in prison if convicted. Mm -hmm. And it's an especially stupid crime to commit if the end goal is simply avoiding following basic health guidelines while on vacation during a pandemic. I mean, come on. I mean, impersonating a cop, if you're going to like in the middle of a serious crime, like robbing a bank or something like that, it's like, okay. It's going to be lower on the totem pole of charges that you already are going to have. Yeah. So, yeah, the risk reward ratio on this crime is way too lopsided. Yeah. I mean, a year from now, hopefully, this pandemic shit will be mostly behind us. 
But these guys will probably still be dealing with the legal ramifications of that time that they decided to risk it all to avoid wearing a piece of fucking cloth over their mouth. Great job. Now, they're, now their actual freedoms are threatened. Yeah. Uh, in other news, though, I guess we should probably update you on what's happening with Texas. Yeehaw. Uh, in case you haven't watched our last couple of videos, or you've been living under a rock, or you've been living in, oh, Texas, in Texas with yeah. no electricity, yeah. uh, Texas and a bunch of other parts of the U.S. had kind of a once-in-a-century snowfall that sadly now happens a lot more frequently than once in a century. And Texas in particular was hit especially hard because their energy and power grid sucks ass. People were without electricity, gas, or even water in some cases for days while temperatures were below freezing. And uh, in the midst of all of this, Texas Senator Ted Cruz tried to sneak away to Cancun with his family, but was caught in the act and shamed into cutting his trip short to come back to Texas. Oh, and uh, as we said in News Dump, uh, the Cruz family also just left their dog behind. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps, the, Snowflake. The, the best part of, of this, I guess, if you could find a silver lining here, is that it was so bad that even Ted Cruz knew he fucked up. Yeah, this looks pretty bad, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, shit. That's how... When, I really stepped in it, didn't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but I, yeah, the, this was also used as a complete, like, oh, well, you're getting, like, th the craziest shit on the GOP side of things right now is, oh, you're using this Ted Cruz thing, but you refuse to get angry at Andrew Cuomo. And it's like, we've all been very angry at Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, a lot of people were coming at us for that. It's like, no, no, Andrew Cuomo is... He fucking sucks. I mean, I guess we didn't cover the, the latest thing in depth, but, like, we have gone on he record. Hid, he hid the numbers of deaths of uh, yeah, senior citizens he, by a lot. He, we yeah. did mention it on a video, like, last week, too, but it's not like... It wasn't, like, a headline-worthy or thumbnail-worthy Yeah, thing, I might I talk more about it on Tech News Day, because it is, like, pretty... <laughs> Pretty horrifying. No, it's but, it's, like, it's terrible. But, and it, and it, yeah. there is a bit of uh, like on the lighthearted side of things. It is still very funnily ironic because he put the book out on how to deal with the COVID crisis. He yet. he danced in the end zone like within the first two months of COVID. But like, but here's how you do it, guys. The the thing that I find different about the two things and why why it's weird they're being uh, compared is that. Andrew Cuomo might have actually committed a real crime that will be investigated, <laughs> yeah. whereas Ted Cruz just uh, committed a huge, like, ethical violation. Yeah, he, he committed the crime of bad office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no, like, actual punishment for Ted Cruz no. other than shame. Yeah. Andrew Cuomo might actually have to face real consequences. Yeah. I, I hope he does. I do not like that man. No, I think he's terrible. I think Andrew Cuomo sucks. I think Gavin Newsom sucks. Yeah. I feel like we've been pretty clear about that, <laughs> but in case you were wondering, no. Yeah. I'm not giving a pass to any governors who are Democrats. In yeah. fact, I don't think there's any good governors in this country. <laughs> there might be some, but I'm not aware of them. Yeah. They all seem <laughs> I know for sure that ours shit. sucks and uh, New York sucks. And Florida. And Texas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, if, you, if your state has not been on our show... You have a good governor, probably. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. If, like, <laughs> They're all bad. Look, Every but the thing, is, the thing is, Ted Cruz, it's not illegal, so we have to shame him yeah. because that's the only kind of retribution yeah, he's going to get. I mean, yeah. He's not up for re-election. Plus, for like it's hilarious. Years. Yeah, it's, the, it's the Andrew Cuomo thing funny. is very sad. Yeah, the, the Cuomo thing's fucked up. The Ted Cruz thing is just like, what the fuck? Really? Yeah. Anyway... Everyone shamed Ted Cruz into flying back from Cancun after being there for like six hours total. Which was awesome. Just like crossing fucking international borders and then checking his phone once he landed and be like, oh, oh geez. geez, they got me. <laughs> I don't know how they did it, but they got me. Uh, the one time I wear a mask, someone still recognizes old Ted. Anyway, good news, though. Good news, guys. Not only has the weather situation in Texas improved quite a bit, but uh, Ted Cruz did manage to help his constituents out, despite some of his biggest supporters like Ben Shapiro and Dinesh D'Souza insisting that there was literally nothing that Ted Cruz could do about any of this. Uh, here's Ted Cruz on Twitter. Hashtag Texas strong. And we see Ted here in what appears to be a warm, cloudless, and entirely snow-free part of Texas. Uh, sleeves rolled up, not really any warm clothing, but he's loading supplies of water into Three different vehicles. And an empty parking lot behind them. And it, yeah, it's... It, uh, like, look... Look, I, it's been... Uh, there's no conspiracy here, probably, but it probably is... Probably not. It is... Uh, they could have... They couldn't have done a worse job making it look less suspicious. Yeah, it's... I, I mean... I don't know. May, I, I, I guess there is some part of Texas somewhere where they either... 
only got like a little bit of snow and it all melted. And that's where, for and some reason, like, he decided to go help. Yeah, but it's it's just weird because, I mean, if you've ever actually lived in snow or even visited somewhere where it snows, like that shit doesn't just melt the second the sun comes out. Like no. there's snow pack for a little while. So mm-hmm. it's it's just weird. We have this wide shot of this parking lot and there's not a speck of snow like anywhere. The sky is completely clear. Everyone looks like they're pretty much warm. But that's the thing with, it's like, because it's Ted Cruz, of course it has to be a infuriatingly suspicious photo. Yeah. Anyone else, it would have been like, yeah, we're here with a whole crew of people. Yeah. There's a, there's cars coming in. There's a yeah, huge line. Yeah, it, yeah, there's not much context here. It's like, what, what's the, what is the context of this? Was this like... I don't know. Is this a site set up for people to come get water supplies if they need it? Because, like, we only see the cars, the specific cars he's loading them into. Like, all- And even if you were going to be a grift about the photo shoot, you would go to the place that has the most snow in it. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> I don't know. But, hey, look. He did it. It's something. And that pro- that refutes the Dinesh D'Souza yeah. and uh, Ben Shapiro. He, he surpassed everyone's non-existent expectations. Well, I guess he could him. do something. Uh, yeah. His biggest fan said he was capable of literally nothing, and he said... Not so fast there, buddy. Yeah. So props to you for that, sir, Mr. Ted Cruz. Thank Meanwhile, you. AOC flew in and raised like $3 million. Yeah, and, AOC and Beto, who uh, aren't even like, they don't even <laughs> represent the people of Texas, mm-hmm. um, managed to use their platforms to raise a, a lot of money. Money that uh, in a more uh, less or less fucked up country would uh, just come from the government <laughs> itself. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they, they raised money. A lot of people are being like, oh, they're just doing this for clout to make Ted Cruz look bad. And it's like, even if that is true, good. Who fucking cares? Yeah, <laughs> the, the net result like, is great. If you're like, if you're suffering, if you haven't had clean water in days and someone offers you a bottle of water, you're going to be like, hold on, wait, are you doing this for clout? No, you just take the fucking water. Look, whatever. Speaking of Texas, though, we've talked about how their energy industry's extreme level of deregulation is a key reason for people being left in the cold and dark for so long. But to really drive that point home that they exist purely for profit, some of Texas's power companies are apparently charging astronomical amounts of money for what little electricity Texans were able to use over the past week or so. They are literally draining people's life savings for wanting to turn the lights on during an ice storm. Well, you should have thought about that. Yeah, one guy that the New York Times spoke to was charged nearly $17,000 for electricity. 70 times what he usually oh, well, pays maybe for all he of his had, utilities combined. Well, maybe he should have had electricity insurance. Yeah. You, the, the energy company doesn't owe you anything. Should have had a generator, idiot. <laughs> Hope you learn your lesson now. <laughs> the invisible hand of the free market just fucked you in the ass. It sure did. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's insane. Like, that's like a, you got to do a triple take on that. $17,000. <laughs> I'm not paying this. For like, that, and that's just so far this month because the way this, this one power company works is like you it's all done through an app. You check your, your meter on the go. So that's just so far. It could go up even more. Um, and another woman that they lo- they talked to was charged over $6,000, uh, which is more than five times what she paid in all of last year <laughs> for electricity. And yeah, other reports in like other Texas news media outlets feature people whose electricity bills for February are around like $5,000 so far. Seems like a lot of people are fucked by this. And uh, all these people are customers of a power company called Gritty. <laughs> G-R-I-D-D-Y, not to be confused with Ugh. Philadelphia Flyers mascot, Gritty, who would never do something so evil. He was snowboarding all weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Gritty would never <laughs> no, charge absolutely. you $17,000 no. for electricity. Grit- Gritty, if it came down to it, would be the conduit between two electrical <laughs> wires. <laughs> Standing yeah. there, sacrificing his life so you could power your home. No, Gritty, don't do it. You'll die. <laughs> for the people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, he was snowboarding. He was fine. Yeah, go for it. Uh, as for how or why Gritty, not the mascot, is able to charge people like uh, this kind of money for electricity, uh, the Times explains it, quote, The steep electric bills in Texas are in part a result of the state's uniquely unregulated energy market, which allows customers to pick their electricity providers among about 220 retailers in an entirely market-driven system. Under some of the plans, when demand increases, price rises. The goal, architects of the system say, is to balance the market by encouraging customers to reduce their usage and power suppliers to create more electricity. But when last week's crisis hit and power systems faltered, the state's Public Utilities Commission ordered that the price cap be raised to its maximum limit of $9 per kilowatt hour, easily pushing many customers' daily electric costs above $100. And that $9, like, it's usually like seven cents. Yes. So... Yeah, you can see if you do just basic sort of math in your head, you can see how uh, 
This might there's might be a lot of money for some people. In Southern California, there's uh the grid that I'm on now, like you can see it on the bill. It looks like that. Remember like the old uh here's what would happen if net neutrality didn't exist? You have to pay extra for this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. It's like during summertime, it's like running basic appliances and TV for this many hours, running basic appliances and th for this many hours. There's like a tiered thing yeah. where you start paying more the more you use. Yeah, our power companies in California aren't so great either. Uh, they, no. They literally have burned down half the state. It's their fucking fault. Mm -hmm. But it's still better than whatever the fuck this is. This is like <laughs> this, some is this is a libertarian fucking nightmare. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, supply and demand, baby. That's the free market. Pave your own road, doofus. Yeah. If you don't like it. Why don't you move to communist China? Oh, you don't like commie? You don't like your friend's house is burning down? Well, I guess you should become a volunteer fireman. <laughs> yeah, freedom's not free. Sometimes it costs seventeen thousand dollars and leaves you with basically nothing. <laughs> and you may uh, not like it, but that's not funny, by the way. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It's a ridiculous concept. It, it's so fucked up. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, maybe not ideal for you, the person that just lost seventeen thousand dollars to, uh, you know run your fucking dishwasher, but the alternative would be the U.S. federal government getting its grubby little hands all over Texas's energy industry and forcing it to do stuff like, uh, I don't know, preparing and pre preventing massive blackouts during natural disasters. And why would you want to do that Yeah, when you could just let thing fail and then charge uh, 70 times the usual amount? No, you understand. We just had the once in a century storm. I'm sure we're going to be fine. Yeah, I put that at a uh, hundred years until we got to worry about that again, right? Rick Perry's like, I'll be long dead before that happens. Yeah, I'll be dead. Who, why, why should I give a shit? No, it'll probably happen next year. Probably. Yeah. It's, uh, the, the, yeah, you know, this weather's just, every year, it's like the hottest year on record uh, and the you, coldest year you, on record. I can't believe we haven't seen it yet, but there has to have been some GOP dipshit in uh, Texas. Well, how's that global warming yeah, for you? Could have used some of that global warming this week, huh? No, you fucking idiot. <laughs> it's climate change. It's two extremes. Last yeah. year, Australia was on fire while we were frozen. Yeah. Uh, anyways. anyways. Uh, yeah, before we get into the headlines half of this show, hey, this episode, it's sponsored by Manscaped. Why don't you Vroom. take care of the things you can control? Yeah. Like, like your unkempt mane. Mm -hmm. Fellas, uh, we are in the thick of winter and uh, storms are brewing. Looks like one to three inches are in the forecast <laughs> when you trim that hibernation bush that take, that's taking, all, taking up your pants area. Luckily, uh, the folks at Manscaped, they specialize in products to make sure that you're walking around town with beautiful snowballs. Manscaped is here to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience, offering precision-engineered tools for those family jewels. When's the last time you shaved your nuts? Well, if you've been putting it off, the Lawnmower 3.0 trimmer is the best hygiene tool for the modern man. Mm -hmm. Thanks to its ceramic blade and advanced skin-safe technology, your snags on your snowballs will be greatly reduced. This trimmer is also waterproof, so you can trim in the shower or the jacuzzi if you'd prefer. And why not go big with the Manscaped Performance Package, the best <laughs> buy of 2021. The Performance Package comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0, the Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Performance Boxer Briefs, and a travel bag. The bundle also comes with the Crop Preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant that will make your balls smell nice and make you feel like your testes are walking in a winter wonderland. And also the Crop Reviver, it's a spray-on toner for your balls made with soothing aloe and witch hazel extracts that make your balls look up to you and say, Folks! <laughs> <laughs> Don't get cold feet this winter! Get 20% off plus free shipping by going to manscaped.com slash weird news. Again, that is manscaped.com slash weird news for 20% off plus free shipping. Thanks, Manscaped, for making our winter wieners look so good. They also have a foot deodorant yeah, spray. They, I, they sent me that. It's yeah, nice. It is. Yeah, it smells good. I just have slippers on most of the day, so uh, it's it's actually pretty nice. And they make a cologne. It smells really good. The cologne is, it is. I haven't needed like to wear cologne at all. For I put it on every once in a while and act like I'm going to go out. Yeah. Yeah. It smells like the 80s. It really does. It does. Yeah. That's a good smell. And this episode is sponsored by Honey. We all shop online, and we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at checkout. Mm -hmm. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one that it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online, ranging from tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands to even food delivery. Hey, come here. Here's how it works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. You wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons that it can find for that site, and if they find a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I just, uh, I went to a big box store yeah. uh, online, and I needed some lights, 
And guess what? Wouldn't you know it? I got like 5% off. It's not much, but it's honest work. Yeah, I, I purchased a, a vinyl record on a uh, major e-commerce auction website, and uh, <laughs> I didn't even know they took promo codes. Oh, yeah, got a few dollars taken off. I got a $40 gift card to, uh, God, I, I, we can't say the names anymore, to a sports memorabilia website. <laughs> So I'm, I ordered some new baseball hats. Oh, nice. But I got a $40 gift card because of the honey gold stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, the honey. Uh, the more I just never, it, the I never checked it. And I, I've been using it for like three years now and it all racked up. Yeah. Anyways, Honey's found its over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. They're wrecking the economy. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and it installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and you'll be supporting the show. Not No word on whether uh, Honey has any... Coupon codes for customers of Gritty. $15,000 oh, yeah. off your yeah. power bill. Yeah, really stick it to them. Yeah. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash weird. That is joinhoney.com slash weird. Now for some headlines, starting with, man steals rings from one Florida girlfriend to propose to his other girlfriend, deputies say. <laughs> and they gave him an award after arresting him. No, but uh, this, yeah, this guy's the ultimate Florida man. He, uh, he... He was dating two women at the same time. He didn't know about each other. Um, and it's not like... The, the headline makes it sound like he gave a wedding ring to propose to one girlfriend and then stole it and gave it to another girlfriend. No, he stole his, one girlfriend's wedding ring from her former marriage. Like, he was looting through her jewelry, stole the ring, gave it to his new girlfriend. The old girlfriend, the first one, didn't discover it until she figured out that he had another girlfriend. And then in, in his Facebook pictures, she was like, wait... That's, That's my, my old wedding ring. Then she went and checked the jewelry box. A bunch was missing. Um, the boyfriend had also taken the second girlfriend to the first girlfriend's apartment when she was at work and been like, this is my house. It's pretty cool, right? And uh, oh, also he was he's a fugitive, like from a hit and run, like in some other state. And so he's still a fugitive now. No, they didn't but catch him? Not yet, I don't oh, think. Oh, damn. But, I mean, uh, up until that part, it was really sounding like an old episode of Jerry Springer, who's also a Florida man who also lives in Sarasota. Oh, does he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense. Bird key, I believe. Uh, Miami lawyer whose pants caught fire during arson trial arrested on cocaine charge. Wow! That's a Florida headline. That's a lot going on. Yeah, I I don't know if we talked about the, the pants. Were they like, fired. liar! No, he, uh, so he was rep he was defending, representing a, uh, a client accused of arson. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to make the point that, you know, maybe you know, sometimes fires start on their own. And uh, right when he was doing that, his pants caught on fire as like a stunt. Like he had, like at, at the time he was like, oh, it must have been my vape exploding because that was happening all the time back in like 2017. But they were like, no, the timing was too good. You planned that shit to make a point that just fires, that things can just spontaneously combust. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, he, has, he's, he's, he got caught with a bunch of cocaine now too. Oh, okay. I don't think he's allowed to be a lawyer anymore. No, he should represent himself. I don't think you can. Uh, Your Honor, I would like to point out that cocaine just appears. <laughs> <laughs> Do a little sleight of hand. Uh, I would like uh, the the uh, the sheriff here to check the pockets of every juror right now. Hmm. Sir, did you go I through and, and place cocaine bags in every juror's pocket? No. Mm -mm. No. No. My pants are on fire. <laughs> oh, God. It's I gotta happening go. again. Got to go. <laughs> Professor gives two-hour lecture, realizes he was on mute the whole time. Oh, God, I swear, I'm not a cat all over again, but on mute. No, it's, there's a video of this, and the guy is mortified. Because he, he does the two-hour lecture, and then at the end, he does, all right, anyone got any questions? And they're like, uh, yeah, you were, uh, we couldn't hear you. And they're like, how long couldn't you hear me? It's like the last two hours. And he's just like, he starts like hyperventilating. He's like... Dude, it sucks. We've done like it. It doesn't happen that often, but probably twice in the past year, we've yeah. recorded entire episodes, like forty-minute yeah, episodes. Like the audio is not turned on, and the audio and, hasn't been turned on, yeah, or something goes wrong, or like the tape or the video stopped yeah, recording. The five SD minutes. SD card in. fucks up. Yeah, it sucks. It is. It ruins my entire night. Yeah, you just feel like you just wasted time. Even though, like, I waste time all the time. Like, how much of my day is really all that productive? Not very much. But, like... But it, when you're being productive yeah, and, and then it gets wasted, just, it's just... Yeah, it's the worst. Completely undone. It sucks. Yeah. So, I, I definitely feel for this profession. That's like the other... Literally on, uh, uh, like, Tuesday's episode last week where I wasn't wearing my mic the entire time, and I was just like, well, I'm not re 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 No, I'm not going to do it. It turned out okay, because yeah. the, the backup mic... The, the safety mic can make it do... But, it, look, th what I'm saying is this happens to the 
best of us, even the, the best best of the best of us. And he's justified in getting very frustrated. Yeah. Because, like, even if the class wasn't listening, it sucks to waste time when you're <laughs> when you're trying to be productive. Yeah. Two hours of talking takes it out of you. Oh no. Oh jeez. Jeez. Buffy Star won't comment on Joss Whedon until surgery for penis paralysis is complete. <laughs> this one of those, when I saw, I thought this article, was the fake news. When I saw the article, I was like, "Why are you offering up this information?" A simple no, uh, no response would be completely fine. Yeah, this, yeah, this is a little bit TMI. Uh, this guy's had some problems. He's like one of the Buffy stars who's just been in getting DUIs and shit like that mm-hmm. for the last 20 years. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he said in his explanation, he's like, yeah, look, I got a lot going on. I'm not going to comment on this Joss thing. Obviously, I love my castmates. But yeah, I'm going through some shit right now. Uh, I slipped on some ice recently uh, and uh, landed on my tailbone and like my anus and my balls and my penis have been numb for like two weeks. Uh, I gotta sit down to piss and shit now because you just never know what's gonna come out. Imagine so. I'm working ima- on that. I'll let you know about Joss Whedon once that's all figured out. Imagine like the, the TMZ reporter or whoever broke this just being like, um, "So, do, did you have a statement on uh, Joss Whedon being a complete and utter monster on set?" Well, yeah, but <laughs> you need to know something about me. I broke my dick. Oh, Harvey, you're never gonna believe this. This guy broke his dick. Oh my God! <laughs> did you hear that? He broke his dick. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Uh, God, every time I've watched clips from the the TMZ like show, I just I feel like I have ADHD. Did you see me fuck over TMZ? Yeah, it was good. It was great. Deleted. They put my Metallica tweet on their website, and I deleted it. So it just you should have changed your display name. I I That's know that to do afterwards, I, I, people said it, but uh, yes, I feel stupid now. But it did completely like remove the embed from it, so there's literally no proof of what was happening on the Twitch stream until you get to Slashers. And I don't know if he deleted his or not yet, but he was like. Bitching about them, like, they stole... Their headline is literally from his tweet. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, fuck TMZ. Every, like, month or so, I'll go on the Google News tab and just uh, search my Twitter handle. Mm-hmm. My tweets end up in some, like, weird fucking articles. Yeah, BuzzFeed and Because it's just, it's just shitty, like, journalists making fucking $5 per article just... Going in the Twitter search yeah, bar. Yeah, my like, Ted Cruz Photoshop of him was in, like, yeah. a, like on a Daily Mail or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I've had, like, I've had viral tweets of mine show up in articles, but I've had other ones where it's just, just me commenting on something with, like, not a lot of engagement. Yeah. And it just ends up on some, like, well, third-tier fucking shitty website. I should have screen-captured the tweet because it, it was a lot crazier than just, like, deleting it because it was, like, it was, like, 20, 2,500 retweets, 800,000 views on the video. Yeah. And it was just, like, gone. Yeah. Like, I don't really care. I had already muted it. I muted it, like, for, like, after recording oh, the video, yeah. it was muted because it was just people arguing about Metallica. And I couldn't even see, like, the tweets that I, I yeah. the, my replies to friends or whatever. Did you, did you at least try to sell some galaxy lights or some uh, uh, some seaweed skin peel? No, I should have uh... promoted the channel. <laughs> uh, on the Ted Cruz one, I put a link to all of the, uh, like, charities you could it's donate fine. to. Uh, people who put that shit underneath their tweets, like... I need, I need, to, I need to set up a, a feature. Uh, I need to set muted words for, like... Whatever, all those. Ads. Whoa, this blew up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just automatically block any tweet that includes like cool galaxy lights or anything like I that. I fucking lost my mind in the past couple months with that WandaVision. I had to mute literally every. And oh, people once start a week talking about it through and just like the articles with the headlines and shit like that. Yeah, it's real annoying. I, I like the show a lot. It's a great show. Luckily, I'm so out of the loop on Marvel that even when there are spoilers, I'm like, I don't even know what that means. Mm-hmm. Good. Nice try spoiling it, but I'm so <laughs> I'm, ignorant, I'm ignorant. <laughs> that that doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> yeah. French workers can now eat lunch at their desks without breaking the law. Good. It's not good, actually. Oh. Well, it's good for now. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, they don't want people crowding up cafeterias during a pandemic, so they're allowed to eat at their desks. But the whole reason it's illegal to eat at your desk, it's not It's not illegal to eat at your desk. It's illegal for, it is illegal for you to eat at your desk, but it's it's. More illegal. Which one is it, Elliot? It's illegal for employers to say, why don't you eat at your desk? Like, you know. Oh, like forcing you to? Because, yeah, it basically. Oh, because then you're working or whatever. Yeah, the, the whole, the law is basically that, like, meal times are meal times and work time is work time. And it's a labor issue and it's it's good, uh, generally speaking. Uh, but, uh, yeah. yeah, they they put a little moratorium on it for now. When I, the first time I went to Europe, I was blown away by like the the 
it's just how different like the people work there because we were you know, I was on tour with bands. Yeah, they work like two hours a day. <laughs> wait, wait, the bus drivers have, like four a, glasses of wine at lunch. Oh, uh, touring with bands like the bus drivers for the va- for the bands in yeah. America, they'll drive. 14 hours straight. Yeah, just popping and, rattlers. Dude, and like, you'd be on the bus in Europe and be like, sorry, it's been four hours. I have to sleep for eight hours now. Yeah. Like shit like that. And they have these, uh, this is a long time ago, so it's probably changed, but they used to have these discs they'd put in. And like, if you went past your time, the driver would get fined for not taking yeah. a break. Good. Yeah. In America, you just pop a few rattlers and fucking yeah, go yeah. all night. Yeah, you just take some amphetamines and you get where you're going. And um, yeah. And hopefully you get there. Naps, and you don't wake up dead. Naps are for Europeans. <laughs> They're always shutting down the restaurants oh, at 3 p.m. Oh, you need a siesta? Why don't you go move to Barcelona? Yeah. I mean, come to American, like, first of all, the drinks are really big. Second of all, nothing ever closes. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Wanted man hands himself in to Sussex police for peace and quiet after getting fed up with people he lives with. Good. Yeah. Cool crime. Being a fugitive during quarantine, you're just stuck with the same group of assholes. No, just take me to fucking jail. Mm-hmm. Do it. It's got to be better than this. I need to. I need to hang out with some new people. Yeah, I need to make some new friends in jail. Also, it's like he's expecting probably like, well, you know, in jail you get in trouble for being too loud and rowdy. So maybe I will get some peace. Yeah, and maybe he does really like peace and quiet. He's like, I just want to read my books. Bedtime is bedtime. Lights out. You go to sleep. You shut the fuck up. The, the, the people living with him are probably like, Jesus, guy's like a warden. I'm running through here with all these rules. It's yeah. like a, like I'm living in a jail cell. Yeah. The guy's like, well, maybe. You know what? I'm wanted for a crime. You know what? I'm going to go screw myself in. I feel like I'm in prison already. Let's just get it over with. Yeah. Chattanooga man charged with identity theft after trying to apply for handgun carry permit as former president Barack Obama. You're not going to say no to Worth the president. Worth a try. <laughs> they ca- yeah. You know. Yeah, but what if he really is Barack Obama? <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be the guy that didn't give the president a gun yeah. or a You don't want to have to deal with the shit storm that's going to happen when you uh, audit this application for a handgun permit from the former president of the United States, you're going to want to just put your rubber stamp on that and move along, buddy. Obama needs a gun. Well, if this isn't the most hypocritical shit I've ever seen, Barack Obama tried to take my guns and here he is begging for a permit. Gun grabber Obama. (laughs) And now he wants to grab his own gun? I don't think so. Probably how this guy got caught. Yeah. Hold on a second. (laughs) Wait a second. I would have believed him if it had said Ronald Reagan. Let's go pay a visit to Mr. O. Bungler. He says he lives in this trailer park. Huh. How many Must houses be filming one guy? of those Netflix documentaries. Yeah. Man, 32, offered COVID jab because NHS thought he was six centimeters tall, giving him BMI of 28,000. Whoa. We got to see this guy. Which, you're like a BMI for obese, I think the cuff is like 40 or 50. So this guy would be like the size of... Very house, small, but also very like, wide yeah, person. Like about this tall, but no, pa- a pancake. Yeah, like a giant pancake. <laughs> he, oh, this guy, like no. The, can you come in? We gotta see this. He could have gotten the shot, he, and it would have been totally fine. No trickery on his part. No need to dress up like a granny. They're like, sir, you are the tiniest person who's ever lived, and also the fattest, tiniest person who's ever lived. We would like to give you your shot because you're especially at risk of yeah. being stepped on and also of getting COVID nineteen. But he actually called up his doctor. He's like. I'm 32 years old and I'm perfectly healthy. And they're like, well, it's because, uh, sorry, a little bit awkward, but it's because you're listed as morbidly obese. Your BMI is off the charts, literally. They don't have room on the chart. You think it freaked him out? Like, what? Am I really? Yeah. He was like, wait, I I didn't, am I, I've been fat this whole time? (laughs) What? Is this why I can't get a girlfriend? Why is everyone lying to me all the time? But yeah, then they called him back. They're like, okay, yeah. So, sorry. Yeah. We got good news and bad news. Yeah. You, which one do you want first? The good news? So, anyway, yeah. okay, turns out you're not morbidly obese. First of all, just, just to double check, you are not six centimeters tall. <laughs> oh, you you're are. You're not going to get stepped You on. are normal human height. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that, yeah, that changes things quite a bit. Yeah. But when you're that tall, every woman looks like the woman from Resident Evil. That's right. Which is a big bonus. Everyone's got big mommy milkers. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just a walking buffet yeah. for them to lay them on. Yeah. Yeah. Dog sucked out of home in tornado. Returns hours later. It was a smart. little Yorkshire Terrier. Got just... <laughs> very sad, obviously. <laughs> just, isn't that was... what Toto was? Uh, yeah, I think so. 
<laughs> yeah. It's not funny, but it, it, it lives, so it's, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, his, his family's home got fucking destroyed by a tornado. And Ted Cruz was like, hey, want to know the easy way to get rid of a dog? Throw it in a tornado. It just spins around up there, round and round and round. You'll never see it again. <laughs> not that I like when dogs die. <laughs> not yeah. that I would have liked my dog Snowflake to freeze to death, to have me come home from Cancun and find her frozen corpse in my house. Mm-hmm. Not that I would have liked that. I'm just saying. Well, I'm happy the dog lived. And it had lived a full uh, Wizard of Oz experience. Yes, dogs. Uh, these tiny dogs. My parents have owned a lot of tiny dogs. And uh, they are uh, strangely resilient. Like, they can take a beating. I don't know if it's because of their, like, low body mass means that they can get, like, basically shot out of a cannon. And when they hit the ground, like, there's not that much kinetic energy behind it. But, like, mm-hmm. yeah, they can, uh, they can go through some shit. So, good for this dog. Yes. Got some great stories to tell down to dog park. <laughs> you, you're not going to believe what happened to me. Japan's ruling party invites more women to meetings as long as they don't talk. Why does this keep happening in Japan like every week? So, this is the follow-up to the Olympics. So, the, the guy at the Olympics who was like, look, we can't have women in these meetings. They're going to yak, 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 yak. And he had to resign because it's yeah. a fucking sexist thing to say. That guy is a member of this political party in Japan that's basically been running the country for 60 years and they have similar uh, thoughts on women and people are like hey uh, you ever notice how there's like no women in any of your meetings maybe you should let more female members of like the party management uh, into your meetings and they're like okay look you're right you know women are having a moment right now (laughs) right now so uh, we will we're gonna do it we're gonna let more women attend the meetings but you're not allowed to talk Mm because because you're going to yak, 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 yak. We're not going to get anything done. Just take notes. But, but hold on. The whole reason we're asking is because of those comments about how you think women are too talkative in meetings. Okay, well, let's see if they start running their mouths in the meetings, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Yeah. It's uh... <laughs> outrageous. <laughs> You've come a long way, baby. <laughs> uh, Ukrainian man invents murder to get police to clear snow from his road. It's a hell of a plan. Mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, well, we got to get in there. Yeah, he, he, the way he did it, like there had to have been a better way to do this because he called the cops. He said, "I've murdered my father" or something like that. So come and get me. So mm-hmm. Come and arrest me. I did it. I fucking killed him. By the way, a lot of snow on my driveway, so you're gonna probably need to bring a plow. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, but they just showed up in an all-wheel drive vehicle and just drove <laughs> yeah, over. <laughs> They're like, "All right, so where's the body?" He's like, "Okay, well, I didn't actually kill him." And for some reason in Ukraine, this is not like a serious crime. He was fined a very small amount of money. But uh, he could have just talked shit to someone on Call of Duty and then. Yeah. Or I don't know. He could have just left it an anonymous thing. We're like, oh, I heard a, a baby crying He's, from over the in snow, that pile the snow of snow. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why he had to invent a murder. But I guess in Ukraine, you can just report fake crimes. And just, they're like, oh, you got us. Fair <laughs> enough. That'll be ten dollars. Not a lot going on. I guess so. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Hope you enjoyed it. Please check out our other videos over here from this uh, insane week that we've all just lived through. Uh, If you're new, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you soon for yet another week of... Well, it's never going to end. Never ends. It just keeps happening. Bye.